Cocktail Every Day, we have been bringing you new details as we get them about Sunday's raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan. One group that's especially interested in all these developments, Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans. Always good to talk to Paul Reichoff. He is the executive director and founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, the first and largest group of its kind joining me now from New York. So good to always see you. Let, let's start with these pictures. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you really to agree or disagree with the president's decision not to release the photos of a dead Osama bin Laden. But for you and members of your group and soldiers who have been fighting for years and years and years, do you just want to see them? Yeah, I, th I think there are a lot of folks who do. You know, I, I think that, that there are mixed opinions throughout the organization, um, but I think there's, there's always a need for visual confirmation. Uh, and I think there's a practical reality, too. Some of us understand that there are parts of the Middle East that don't have the Internet, don't have uh, CNN, and, and they need some kind of visual confirmation to be able to tell people on the ground throughout the Middle East that he's dead. But we believe the president. Uh, it's, it's a really good day for America. It's a good week for America, and especially for our military and veterans community that have been working so hard for this very moment. And you mentioned, Paul, that it's part of confirmation, but is it... Also a part of closure for you and other veterans, would you say? I think it is. You know, I, I was at, down at Ground Zero on Sunday night, and I know a lot of folks wanted to see it, uh, that they wanted that actual confirmation. And also, we did it with Uday and Kusay Hussein. Yeah. We had visual confirmation with Saddam Hussein. So I think there was some expectation, and there was a precedent sent with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the president makes the call. We've got to trust that he's got the best interest of the country in mind here. And, and we're really just, you know, happy about the news, and we're praising our brothers and sisters throughout the military for the fine job they did on this operation and, and all the years leading up to it to get us to this, to this point. Can you say this was... Will, they, will there be a bigger victory than this for Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans? Was this always kind of, um, I, I, I guess there, there are bigger things at play and a bigger goals to accomplish. And yes, he was just one man. But can there really be a bigger victory in your mind and, and some of the, the other veterans' minds than this? Well, I think peace would, would be an ultimate victory. Yeah. We all want that. Um, but, but I think that, that this is a big win. Uh, and it's been a rough couple of years, and, and the toll on, on our community and on our families uh, has been huge. Uh, so it's, it's good to get some good news. Uh, and it's also great to have the support of the American people behind us. I mean, I've gotten so many emails. All our members are getting so much support and, and so much thanks. I think the key for us now is for the American public to keep that up. Uh, Memorial Day is coming in a couple of weeks, and we want Americans to remember this feeling they have now, remember that support for our troops and veterans, carry it over into Memorial Day, carry it over into Veterans Day and throughout the next couple of years. We need folks to stay focused on our troops after this, this, this event passes. Uh, you went down to Ground Zero the night of. Why'd you go down there? What was that like down there? You know, I was there working as a rescue worker 10 years ago. Never thought I'd go back and see folks celebrating and, and cheering in the same spot. So I wanted to be around other folks who were there. Uh, I wanted to experience it. There were a lot of cops and firemen and veterans and first responders. And, and we, you know, we weren't celebrating as much. I think we, we were down there reflecting and, and walking around, seeing the firehouses and spending time chatting with each other. Um, but it was about closure. And it was also about being around other people who understood your experience. You didn't want to just sit home on your couch. You want to be around other veterans who had been overseas and, and who could, you could talk to them experience about. What is your thought now, because the debate has begun uh, to rage a bit, um, about what to do in Afghanistan. It's, okay, we, we've got this guy. We've got the guy we were after. Um, let's hightail it out of there. What is your thought now on what the mission, uh, or how this might change the mission in Afghanistan, and should this speed up uh, the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan? Uh, we should always be debating. I mean, that, that's good to have the American public involved in that conversation. The troops talk about it all the time. I think it's clear we're coming home. You know, the, the president's made his timeline clear. The question is whether or not that's going to be accelerated. Uh, and for our troops and veterans, you know, we just want to know what the expectation is. We want a clear mission. Whatever it is, we're going to achieve it. And we also want folks to understand there's still some, some heavy fighting going on in Afghanistan. We're preparing for a Taliban spring offensive. Uh, Iraq had the deadliest month in almost two years. So folks are still in harm's way. We need to make sure the American public keeps their eyes on what's happening overseas and they don't think that some, just, some big plug was pulled and everybody's going to come rolling home. We're going to need support for the next couple of years. And one more thing to you here. You, you said debate is always good. The other part of the debate going on right now is exactly how much credit goes towards this president, this administration, versus the last president and the last administration. In your estimation, is that even fair? Is that a silly argument to be having? Do you view it as, of course, it took years of several administrations and a lot of people to make this happen? Or do you give a lot of credit to this administration and this president? 
Look, there's a lot of credit to go around. I know a lot of politicians are going to want credit, but the folks who deserve the credit are our troops. Uh, those Navy SEAL operators and every other man and woman who served since 9-11, uh, almost 2.2 million of them. And, and those are the folks who deserve the credit. And, and right now they need support, especially in the area of, of unemployment. We found out this morning the unemployment rate for Iraq and Afghanistan vets is still at 11 percent. That's two points higher than the national average. So we need folks to thank them for their service, thank them for this victory, and most importantly, give them a job, because that's what they need right now. Okay, that's a shame. I was, I was next thing I was going to be asking about, that 11% number. Um, what do we need to do about that, in your estimation? And oftentimes we just put out that one number, 9% unemployment, it was 8.8% before, but um, should we also, every time we give that unemployment rate, make sure we give the breakdown of veterans, of minorities, of young people. Uh, just what is your thought, and why are we not focused enough on that, on that number? It's a shame yeah, to hear that yeah, some I of our veterans can't find jobs. I think, I think it's a very important number. You know, bottom line is there are over 200,000 Iraq and Afghanistan veterans who are unemployed right now. IAVA is laser focused on that number uh, this year and we're going to be for the next couple years. Our goal is to reduce veterans unemployment by Veterans Day. That's 11-11. We want to bring that number down way below 200,000. Every American can help. You can hire a veteran. You can help train veterans. You can support organizations like ours that, that are sending them back to school and are setting them up for success. We're working with a lot of companies uh, to try to hire them. And that's the bottom line there. Understand that what you saw at the SEALs, you know, that's the type of community that our veterans are coming from. And those are the types of folks you want in your job. Whether it's a Fortune 500 company or a small business with five people, you want veterans on the front lines of this economy in the next couple of years as well. All right. Paul Reichoff, man, it's always good to talk to you, buddy. Thanks so much. You're passionate about what you do. Uh, I always applaud you for what you do. Thanks so much. I know I'll talk to you again soon. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, TJ. Thank you. Always appreciate it, TJ. Mm -hmm.